Spring's these new brakes. <coughs> and a lovely spring morning. How are you, Father Fulton? Well enough, Monsignor. It was all my fault. I was in too much of a rush. I missed my train last night. You stayed over for a good steak dinner, didn't you? They don't feed you well at your place, do they? Oh, it was, it was a concert. I meant to leave before the last movement started, but... Mr. Toscanini and Mr. Beethoven, digging away at the discipline of the Jesuit, huh? No, this time it was Edvard Grieg, his piano concerto. Was it? Well, I am a man who likes words with his music. Song. That's what makes me merry. Excuse me while I get my papers. Father, aren't you the man who gave up music? Yes, I gave up my piano. Monsignor, I wonder, I know it's out of your way. Well, sure, step in, step in. Thank you, Monsignor. <laughs> Caesar! <laughs> See, down. Down, nothing wrong in helping a Jesuit. Down. <clears throat> smell the spring. You smell it? Ah, the old bones. Every one of them begins remembering this time of year. <clears throat> Pollen. Never could stand this stuff. Well, senior, I, I'm rather late. It... <laughs> there should be a law against classrooms in spring. I called Father Fulton, and he's not in his room. Again? Very well. I shall take his class. That's the third time this month. Missed his train again. I shall have to speak to him about those concerts. Excuse me, Father. As Jesuits, we embrace certain basic disciplines. The discipline of mind, body, prayer, work. Fifteen years of study and preparation. As the Church counts time, we are a very young society. We are only 400 years old. And yet in that time, 14 popes have received Jesuit training, and we have given to the church 24 saints. And now if... Oh. Good morning, Father Thornton. I was just starting to give you a lecture for you. I'm sorry, Father yes, King. Yes, I know. You missed your train again. Father... Well, we'll say no more about it. For now. He's not a good example for the students. As master of novices, I feel it my duty to warn you of that. With your permission, Father Rector, I shall take it as my duty to ask Father Fulton several very pointed questions. No, I think we'll leave that to Father Arnoux. What? Huh? Why not? Before he joined us, he was a remarkably successful lawyer. This is hardly a legal matter. Nor is it legal to condemn a man before hearing his defense. Oh, Brother Clifford. Uh, yes, Father Rector. Will you ask Father Arnoux to stop by and see me? Yes, Father, yes. A telegram. Thank you. One moment. As a matter of fact, Father, our news coming to see me in a few minutes. Good. I'm having my own difficulties with him. Anything serious? He persists in writing articles that I do not approve of, nor do I like the magazines that publish what he says. Brother Clifford, have someone meet Father Quarterman at the station. Father Quarterman? Yes, he's stopping off here on his way from the Far East. Father Quarterman will be a great inspiration to your novices, Father Stewart. Good, Father Rector. I am sure we can all do with a little inspiration these days. Now, as regards Father Fulton... And Father Arnoux. Yes. For four centuries, we have been known as the militant Jesuits. The first legion of the Lord. Don't you feel that it's rather soon for us to begin turning our swords inward? I have a great deal of faith in Father Fulton. And I shall continue to place my trust in Father Arnoux. I'll see him in your office as soon as you've had your talk with him. Very well, Father Rector. I do not enjoy mutilating another man's work, Father Arnoux. I've left as much as my conscience will allow. Anyway, I see you've left the title. The Jesuits in the modern world. What have we to do with the world as it is today? The time for isolationism is past, Father, even in religion. And uh, may I ask, why did you take out this? The Jesuits have no monopoly on faith. What does it mean? Well, surely it's quite obvious that we are not the only people who believe in God. Father Arnoux, why do you persist in making things difficult for me? I'm sorry if I seem to do that. Good afternoon, Good afternoon mm. Father Rector. Mark, I'm worried about Father Fulton. I have reason to believe that he may be near the breaking point. Oh, I don't believe. 
Oh, I know that in the spring we always tell the novices that it's just spring fever, and sometimes it is. But this is different. Father Fulton is no novice. Spring fever has no respect for rank or class. Mark. Mark, will you speak to him? Frankly, I would prefer not to. You know, these are such delicate matters, and besides, Fulton is my friend. Oh, all the more reason, then. Friends know each other, know each other's desires, ambitions. I hope you won't give this to me as a command, Father Rector. And do you know, I think I will. I do. Well, if you put it that way, of course, I have no choice but to obey. Please, Father, let me point out to you the particular glory of the Society is that it chooses to obey. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you for reminding me. You're off the phone. No, never mind. I'll write another. Now, Johnny, take it easy. Come in. Oh, hello, Mark. How about some handball this afternoon? No, I don't think so. Oh, come on, a good workout after your classes. That's right. When the flesh is rebellious, slap it down. I'm sorry, Mark, not for me, not today. I don't know. On a day like this, I get the feeling either I let off a lot of steam or I'll pull the walls down right on top of me. And the new Samson was hailed in the land. But where, oh, where was Delilah? Oh, by this time, not too young and probably very fat. Thank you. I don't think about her anymore. Oh, I do. Oh, well, let's hear more. Smile if you want to. I suppose I broke her heart. Do you know that still haunts me? How old was she? Not quite 18. What? Well, she's forgotten it by now. I hope so. And yet I don't. Isn't that strange? No, perfectly normal. Mark. I'm tired of fighting devils real and imaginary. I'd like to go home. I mean the house where I came from, the street where I used to play as a kid. I'd like to be part of a real family again. Well, you talk of leaving, but what is it you're leaving? You know, once a priest, always a priest. I don't know, Mark. I... All I know is I've got to stop somewhere. I have to get away from this house. Oh, I'll be regular about it. I'll write the usual letter to Father Provincial asking for my release. But I'm not going to sit around waiting for an answer. I'm leaving now, tonight. You know, Mark, it's pretty lonely being a soldier of God all the time. You too, Tom? Yes, I'm like John. I want a furlough, a long, long furlough. I want to get out and stay out. I'm dying in here while the world passes me by. It's not much of a world. Oh, I'm not inclined to be particular about it. It's beautiful. As you remember it, the little part of the world just around you, your childhood, your music, your faith in God. But it's not like that. Anyhow, wherever a man is, he has to live for something. What is it you want to live for? Your music? If I can't find peace of soul in this house just as it is, what chance would I have of finding it in a piano? You won't find much peace outside either. The fact is, John, it's a very difficult world. It's ailing in every joint and it has fever and it stinks like an old time sick room. Then that's where we ought to be instead of locked up here doing nothing about it. Tom. If we manage to do anything at all, it will be from here. Well, Mark, as a lawyer, you must have known the world pretty well. Well, I was involved in over 50 cases of murder. So, you had an excellent reason for coming here. For you, it was an escape. You wouldn't rebel. No? Well, I think Father Rector has certain memories about me. I was not always happy here. Are you happy here now? Come on, let's be honest about it. I'd be very honest. I could never find peace anywhere else. Oh, I still rebel now and then. Discipline can be hard. And mind you, I don't pretend that I love every man in this house like a brother every minute of the day. No, you don't. But I belong here. That might be all right for you, Mark, but we don't belong. That's not for me to answer. Nor for you, for that matter. Belonging comes, I don't know how, you're walking or reading or praying or just sitting in the window watching the rain come down and suddenly you feel at home and at peace you belong and then you can begin to help the world and you can really help i know better than you what it needs were you ever in the main ward of a county hospital on a saturday night where they bring in the beatings and the drunks all the people who try to kill themselves and each other because they have nothing to cling to no faith, no love, no roots, no altar. Those are the things you ought to break them. Can you? Are you ready? John, where 
where's your own faith? Where? There's a bell for class. Mark, did Father Rector send you here to talk to me? Why, yes, he did ask me to look in on you. Follow these instructions for now, Brother Mayor. Yes, Doctor. Thank you. with Bishop. One of the few. I see. I can't believe my eyes. The last time I saw you was, let me see. Fordham College. I was one of your students. Of course. Yes, yes, I remember. You will also remember that I was thrown out. <laughs> Quite a row, wasn't it? Well, it just doesn't pay to call the dean a pious hypocrite. No, it doesn't. Although I still think they should have let you graduate. Thanks. Perhaps it was all for the best. Fordham's loss was Harvard's gain. Well. And what is a Harvard man doing in this little town? Born here. Oh. I came back here when I got tired of the rest of the world, and first thing I know, I've inherited a few Jesuits along with the rest of old Dr. Morgan's practice. Quite a joke, isn't it? No joke to Father Sierra. Tell me, is his condition alarming? Yes, quite. Some congestion of the lung, pneumonia maybe, and three years on your back as a paralytic may be good for the soul, but it's poor preparation for the kind of fight his body's up against now. The whole case is rather puzzling. Puzzling? I was just thinking, if he had as much faith in his legs as he has in uh, Blessed Joseph, he might not need a doctor at all. Father Rector Free? Mm -hmm. Is Father Rector Free? Oh, sorry, Doctor. Father Rector's with Father Quarterman. He said not to put any calls through. How do you like that? What do I have to do to see him about one of his own men? Get an appointment a week in advance? Look, Father. Brother. What? Brother, not Father. Okay, Brother. I'm just as busy as Father Rector. Oh, really? So please tell him if he wants a report on the patient, he can call my office or speak to me when I come back this evening to look in on Father Sierra. So long, Father. Rather impatient. Just reminding himself he doesn't like us. No, it would not a word. I know you're tired. You've come here for a rest. I'll, uh, ah, Mark, you're just in time. Father Quarterman. Father Arnaud. Father. This is a great honor. Pleasure is mine. I've admired your articles for years. I only write about things. You go out and do them all over the world. It's like suddenly meeting Marco Polo and realizing he's not just a legend. There, Edward, what did I tell you? You'll have the whole house at your feet. Now, you go along now. Brother Clifford will show it to your room. Be sure to be at your best tonight. Father Quarterman will have some interesting things to tell us about India. Oh. Well, good day to you, Father. Good day, Father. Uh, come in, Mark. Did you have a chance to speak with Father Fulton? Yes, I did. The situation is worse than I thought.
tonight as soon as I can. I don't want to make a scene about it. I'll just leave this letter of resignation in Father Rector's office. That's all there is to it. And this is goodbye for a while. Where's John? John, we missed you in chapel. Let's get together afterward and really talk this through. Mark, there's nothing more to talk about. Nothing. Is he conscious? From time to time, he mentions your name. Good evening. How is he? Still delirious. Is there any change in his condition? The fever breaks tonight. We'll be all right. Not. He was one of my. Professors, when I first came here as a novice, I've always felt very close to him. Oh. Is there anything one can do to help? No, we're doing everything possible. I'll sit up the next few hours with Father Sierra. You can take the last trick if you like, brother. Thank you, Doctor. I do want to hear Father Quarterman. Goodbye, Jose. God be with you all. Militant friends. Good evening. Good evening. Well, well, Monsignor, what can we do for you? Father Rector said Father Quarterman would be showing some pictures about India. Oh, Father Rector invited you here. And I've never been to India, and not to a good movie either since uh, Lassie Meets Frankenstein. Well, there's always something interesting going on with the Jesuits. Monsignor, good evening. Oh, Father Quarterman. Bobby. Permit oh. me. Monsignor Carey, an old friend of Father Rector. Oh, and this is Caesar. <laughs> <laughs> now, Caesar, really? Good dog, good dog. Come on, doggy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, never mind, never mind. Monsignor? I'm so happy to meet you, your grace. No, no, not your grace. No? Now that I'm back from the foreign missions, I'm no longer a bishop, just a Jesuit. Nothing more, nothing less. Oh, take your coat off, Monsignor. Make yourself comfortable. We're used to taking things easy around the community room. Thank you, Brother Clifford. Oh, sit down, Monsignor. Here's your beast, Monsignor. Thank you, Bobby, kindly. Thank you. How are you, Monsignor? You're the cheeriest thing I've seen in weeks. I'm quite well, but then I always am. Tell me, Bobby, how goes everything with the shock troops of heaven this evening? I detest being called Bobby. And if you don't like us, Monsignor, why do you keep calling on us? <laughs> we all have our weaknesses. Mine is the fondness of the foot soldier for the general staff. <laughs> it must be that I like to be seen in the company of the brass hats. Brass hats. Nonsense. But you are miles away from the real fighting most of the time, aren't you? I... What do you know, for instance, about living or about dying? I saw a man die tonight. And this morning, I saw a baby born. Did any of you ever see a baby born? Let me commend it to your attention. We are not a nursing order. Would that be so bad? I tell you, my friends, the world is sick and someone ought to attend to it. People are worried. They're frightened. They're... Ah, Father Rector. How are you, Monsignor? Sit down, sit down. Don't disturb yourself. Thank you, Father Rector. Father well, Caesar, old man, how are you? Old boy? Uh, how is Father Sierra tonight? Uh, I'm worried. His fever is higher. And he has considerable delirium. We were wise to anoint him. Don't you think one of us should be with him? No, no. The doctor thinks it's better for him to see no one. He'll let us know if there's any change. Well, now, are we ready for the films? Just about, I think. Well, now, let's have them. All right, Brother Shiva. Brother Mayor. In India, 
I found that in some respects the saints of our church and the Indian holy men are not so far apart. They lead the simple life and have similar ways with people. They capture the soul by capturing the imagination. Most of what happens in the East seems incredible. Sometimes it makes you wonder what there is in hypnotic suggestion. Out there, you begin to believe that you have this power yourself. To the natives, the presence of our Lord and his blessed mother and all the saints in heaven is a real thing. Out there, you begin... Oh, look. Father Sierra, it's impossible. Father Sierra. John, where's John? John. John, where are you? Jose, here I am. I came as soon as I could, John. Are you in trouble? Jose, you came down for me? I heard you say goodbye. And a voice was telling me to get up, and suddenly I saw that I could walk. This is wonderful, Jose. It was a miracle. Now I know the meaning of those words. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth. I believe. Your blessing, Jose. Benedictio Dei Omnipotentis. Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Descended supervos et many et semper. Amen. You were lost and I found you. I wasn't lost. Lost I... in a great forest. And a voice kept saying, go to John. You mean you had a vision? I spoke with Blessed Joseph. I put my hand in his and he brought me straight to John. Oh, say, this is great joy for all of us. It's a miracle, a great miracle. Just what he said. All I know, he was running a high fever. And when the fever broke, he was walking. Did you give him anything? Nothing. Well, how do you explain it? I can't. You mean, this is what we would call a miracle? You know, it's a word we don't use lightly here. I'm not using it lightly. I'm not using it at all. Excuse me, Father. Father Sierra, I want you back in bed. Oh. Oh, please, Doctor. Please let me say one little prayer in chapel. Just one little prayer of joy and thanksgiving. The fathers will say it for you, Jose. Father, will you give me a hand, please? Oh, now, in truth, this is God's house. It's a sign. Yes, yes. That man has been in bed for three years. I know he couldn't walk. What do you think of it, Father? I don't know, Monsignor. Who are we to say for sure? Yet we saw it happen. A great and strange event. Very great and very strange. Well, people will be saying, those Jesuit rascals are dealing in black magic again. Fortunately, our reputation doesn't depend on magic. Well, Monsignor, let us join the fathers in chapel. John, shall we go to chapel now? What does it all mean, Mark? Why should a miracle happen to Father Sierra just at the moment when I was getting ready to leave? It was a miracle, wasn't it? What difference does it make what we call it? All that matters is that Father Sierra is recovered and that you feel differently about a lot of things. I'd like to pray now if I could, but suddenly I don't know how anymore. The words won't come. Well, maybe you're not meant to do it with words. Maybe there is a better way for you, John.
Thank you. One dollar. You don't have to. Paul, it looks as if the Jesuits are popular once more, doesn't it? Anyone suspected of having the air of God is popular these days, Edward. If the world comes back to us to do penance, inspired by a great miracle, shall we shut the door in the world's face? This is the final proof which you need for the cause of Blessed Joseph, for which you've worked most of your life, to have him declared a saint. Yes, this would mean a great deal to me, Edward. Yes, it's a sign. A sign of God's goodness to this house. You don't need a doctor anymore, Father. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you so much. Not at all. Bye-bye and take care of yourself. Oh, Dr. Morel. Hello, Father. I'll walk to the door with you. I've been wanting to ask you a few questions about Father Sierra. Well, he's doing fine. Forgive me, Doctor, but why do you keep on implying to the fathers that this was a miracle when you don't believe in anything yourself? Look, Father, I have no explanation for what happened. If you people accept it as a miracle, all right, make the most of it. I'm not particular about the label. But I am. What are you complaining about? You have people coming here from clear across the country. We happen to have a responsibility to the people. I'm sorry, Father. I'm due at the hospital. Uh, one more question, if I may. Uh, would it be possible for me to see the records on Father Sierra? What records? Well, Dr. Morgan must have had a file on him. Well, I haven't had a chance to go through his records yet. Could I have a look at that file? I'll make a note of it. Good morning, Father. Good morning. You drive this truck, Joe and Tom. This is Joe. Meet Dr. Morrell, Joe. Hi. Hello. Everyone in town was coming along, so I just came too. Did you ever see such a crowd? And they say it started to happen again. And I thought if it could happen to folks besides Father Sierra, who knows? It might even happen to me. Don't you think it might, Peter? Well, here we go. Now stop this, Terry. Want me to push you up to the gate? Yeah. Terry, I don't want you to do this. What's the trouble? Look. Look, Joe, this is no place for Terry. Can't you take her back to town now? Sorry, Doc. Gotta have that furniture delivered by 5 p.m. Newlyweds. You know, kind of anxious to get their stuff. I'll pick Terry up on the way back. Never mind. I'll take her back in my car. But I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. No, just giving Terry a lift home, that's all. Peter's angry with me because Joe took me up to St. Gregory's. Oh, and she never told me a word. Well, Miss Terry, with your permission, I'm going to have a little talk with our Joe. He takes her all kinds of places. You don't have my permission, and I want him to take me places. How else would I ever see anything? I never dreamt that this town would be so crowded. People are streaming here from everywhere. Our home is about the only one that hasn't been turned into a rooming house. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. Well, why can't we be a rooming house? Oh, Miss Terry. But then I could talk to the pilgrims. Pilgrims, a bunch of sensation seekers chasing a fire engine. You find them everywhere. Floods, tornadoes, murder trials. You don't seriously think any one of them really believes. Why not? Doesn't everyone believe in God? Not everyone. They only think they don't. I guess people get mixed up because there are so many religions. If you ask me, there ought to be only one faith. Who's going to select which one? Well, look, now, my grandfather was a Baptist and he married a Catholic. When they couldn't get together on the matter of faith, they sent my father to an Episcopalian school. Then, when he met my mother, well, she was a Lutheran. <laughs> and on Sundays, they'd all go to different churches. And we little ones would listen one week to the Lutheran pastor and the next week to the Episcopalian. How about some tea? No, no, dear, no tea, thank you. But for you, Miss Terry. Yeah. 
funny old Henrietta. Every time Mother's away, she gets very possessive and talkative. But she's still the best cook in town. Just where is your dashing mother? Oh, she's in the city today, getting ready for another trip to Europe. Magazine stuff. Paris in the spring. All expenses paid. Oh, you Gil Martin sure get around. We're flying from New York next Monday. Yeah, it's all right. Oh, Peter. Why does everything have to happen all at once? Now, hold on. If you mean St. Gregory's, I want you to promise me not to go back there again. Why? It is a miracle, isn't it? It says so in all the papers. Now, look, Terry. Every time a miracle happens, someone gets hurt. Hurt? It doesn't always work for everyone. I just don't want to see you hurt. Not you. Understand? Yes, perhaps I do. That sounds better. You know, it's nice to be back here again. Find everything the same, just as it was in the old days. It isn't the same, Peter. It can't ever be the same. Take it easy. Everyone says you made a wonderful adjustment. Oh, sure, I made a wonderful adjustment. But I've never given up hoping that someday... Terry, this isn't like you. Oh, I know what's the matter, Peter. You'll be the last one to believe in a miracle. But after all, it just stands to reason that there must be something somewhere that holds the world together. And that fixes up things where no one else can. Well, I'm sorry, Angel, but that's a little out of my field. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Senior. Come on in. Can you spare a blessing for a pious pilgrim? Come on in. And don't talk to me about pilgrims. If this keeps up, we'll have to build a whole new town. They're already talking about that down at the Chamber of Commerce. No, I'll stick to my plate. I hope these people go back home. We don't have the hospitals to take care of them here, or the doctors either. There's nothing we can do for them. Nothing. My boy, they don't want you to do anything at all. They're looking to the blessed Joseph. A lot he'll do for them. By the way, you you know Terry Gilmartin? Yes, I know Terry. In fact, I'm her Latin tutor. Wonderful girl. Yes, wonderful parents, too. I was with her father the day he died. I was with Terry the day she was thrown from the horse. For a while, the whole world just came to a stop for her. And then she began to make the kind of recovery doctors dream of. She began to build a whole new life for herself. Now she's just like all the rest of these people, dreaming and hoping for the impossible. You mean she's never going to be any better? There's nothing to hope for? Nothing. It's a complete break in the spinal cord. She'll never walk again. Now you see what I mean, Monsignor. What are we going to do with people like Terry who get their hopes so high? They're going to be worse off than they were before. You are trying too hard, trying to do too much. All right, I'm out of joint just like the rest of the world. Nothing adds up to anything anymore. Peter? Yes? What happened to you while you were away? Oh, I don't know. I guess I was just like a thousand other kids. I had a lot of big plans, and somehow, nothing ever came of them. Here I am at 35, back in this little town. Not because I believe in it, but because there's nowhere else to go. Nothing else to hang on to. As a boy, you had on you the mark of my hand when I caught you stealing apples from my orchard, didn't you? That was a heavy hand. There's a heavier hand over you now, Peter. Well, drop in and see me once in a while. Even if you don't come to church. And oh, yes, if you run short of beds, I can put up a few cases for you in the rectory. Thanks, Monsignor. Thanks a lot. Rosie, are you sure you got off the bed all by yourself? Yes. No, I mean, Dr. Morel did not help you. No. But you was in the room. Mark. I was looking at Blessed Joseph. Of course. You see, I'm only trying to reconstruct exactly what happened but here. But you know what happened. I walked. I can still walk. Let me show no, you. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> now, Jose, 
You are a priest of God, but also a man of science. Don't you think you could possibly have imagined all this while you were delirious? Yes, I, I thought of all that. But it's really very simple. Because if it was not a miracle, I could not have walked. John. Hello, Mark. Isn't it wonderful? I never liked crowds. Come on, Mark. Don't always be so rational about everything. I know it's going to make a big change in our way of life, but perhaps we needed a big change, all of us. Listen to the murmur of that crowd. It's like the hum of a great orchestra just before the start of a concert. And like music, it has swept you off your feet. How is the boy, Doctor? Poor kid didn't have a chance. Is he? Of course. Trip alone was enough to kill him. I only tried a million to one shot. All right, Miss Hamilton. You're elected. Break the news to his mother. Shall I send her in here? Oh, I suppose so. Technicalities and stuff. Oh, well, uh, do you want to see a father on you? Waiting? Since you went into surgery. OK. Hold it. First, get me the file on Father Sierra. Yeah. All right, thank you. Please step in, Father. Thank you. Hello, Father. Hello, Doctor. A very busy hospital. Most of them haven't got a sense. Sit down. Thank you. They go up the hill to be cured by your people, and then they need medical attention, and we get them. Cigarette? Scattered. Get caught in the crowd? More like a cattle stampede. Yes, the rich, the halt, the lame, the blind, the poor. And all because someone started to cry miracle. Half of them would have come just as quickly if somebody had shouted gold. Humanity I love, but crowds. Well now, may I please see the records on Father Sierra? Correct? Oh yes. Yes, of course. Yeah, they're around here somewhere. Here we are. Nothing much there. Just a record of visits made and a few medicines ordered. Is that all? That's all. No x-rays? I guess there were none. Neurocirculatory asthenia. Yes. Something like uh, shell shock, isn't it? Well, that depends. And medicine, you think, cannot account for his cure? Look, Father. Human beings are just so many wonderful machines. Sometimes you can fix them, sometimes you cannot. I see. And you couldn't fix Father Sierra. What is this, cross-examination? Not at all, but you haven't answered my question. Excuse me, Doctor, but Mrs. Dunn. Oh. Her son just died a couple of minutes ago. Sure, send her in. One of the pilgrims? Uh-huh. Please sit down. Several papers to be filled out, Mrs. Dunn. Please don't mind, they won't need much time. First, I want to tell you about your son. He had no pain when he died. Father, why is my boy dead? Why? Explain to me why. Mrs. Dunn, please. They said there was a miracle here. They said that all I had to do was to come here and my baby would be all right. Now, please, so Mrs. I came and look at me. I converted my insurance policy. I sold everything I had. I would have sold my flesh. <laughs> What did I have out of life but my baby? Can you explain to me why he is there? Mrs. Dunn. Why? Please take this. Miss Hamilton. No, no, I don't want it. I, I want it. No, no, Mrs. Dunn. Where is he? I haven't seen him yet. May I go with you? Thank you. I don't want to see my boy. I wish I could have done more for the boy. He would have 
died anyhow, but not so soon. Couldn't stand the excitement. You mean he died of too much miracle? Well, I'll be going. I'm sorry I've taken your time. Not at all. Not at all. Doctor. The State Medical Association called up. The committee wants to arrange an appointment with you. Oh, tomorrow. No, make it day after tomorrow. Some of the doctors have come on from out of town. What do they want? Well, I'm not sure they know. No two of them seem to be able to agree on anything. But they'd like to talk to you. Fine. Always glad to talk to doctors who can't agree on miracles. Make it this afternoon. <laughs> Dr. Morrell speaking. Who? Mrs. Gilmartin? Of course, put her on. Well, how are you? Why don't you get back? Yes. What's that? I wouldn't have called you at the hospital, Peter, but Terry's running a high temperature. Yes, 103 to 104. All right, Nora, don't worry. I'll be right over. Hi, Nora. I don't know what to think. She seemed fine yesterday. We were packing to get ready for this trip, and all of a sudden she began to run her temperature. It's been rising ever since. Oh, she was so excited about the trip. Do you think that's what it is, Peter, the excitement? Oh, never a moment of peace. Well, you go right on in, Peter. I'll be with you in a few moments. All right. Hello? Oh, hello, Alice. Oh, I've been so worried. Terry's sick, and I don't know. I just don't know what's wrong with her. Hello, Angel. Your mother tells me you're not feeling well. <laughs> Taking your own temperature, huh? Mm -hmm. Thank you. You mind? Say all these yours? Mm -hmm. Not bad. Dancing girls and everything. You're coming a long way. It's a lot better than the last time I was here. Seven. You know, you're a lucky young woman. With a temperature like that, you should have been dead hours ago. Oh, Peter. I feel awful. Just awful. I know. But you'd feel a lot better if you'd really put this over on me, wouldn't you? Tell me what you use. Hot water bottle. Peter, you beast. I knew all the time. Of course. When I was a boy, we used to put the thermometer on a radiator to get a real high temperature. Only trouble was we sometimes burned our tongues. Oh, Peter, look. What? I love Mother, and I wouldn't hurt her for anything. And if you're a good sport, you won't tell her how I tried to fool her, will you? Why shouldn't I? Because I don't want to go to Europe. I want to stay right here. Now, don't be silly. You're not making sense, Terry. I don't want to make sense. I want the impossible to happen just once in my life, Peter. You mustn't say that, Terry. You mustn't even think it. I know. Be a good girl, Terry. Be a brave girl, Terry. Keep on drawing pictures of all the things you can never do. And... Well, Peter. It's all right, Nora. Just a sudden flare-up. I think the fever will go down about as suddenly as it went up. Oh, thanks, Peter. I've been so worried. Tell me, how soon were you to leave for Europe? The day after tomorrow. Well, I think you could still make that trip if you like. In fact, I would strongly recommend it. What Terry needs is a good change of climate. At once. But her fever... Now, don't worry about her fever. Here. Just see that she gets a few of these. Might take a few yourself to relax. Thanks, Peter. Well, have a nice trip. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Well, of course, we can't anticipate the decision of the church. But 
but is there any reason why these pilgrims shouldn't be allowed to say a few prayers in our outdoor chapel? If, of course, they don't disturb the regular schedules of our novices. Uh, Father Rector, the photographers want to take some pictures of Father Fierro's room. No, no, that's quite impossible. Father, there are times when pictures are more moving than rosary. No, and tell them that's final. We've been quite liberal with the press, and they must be content. Content? The press? It seems to me that when a tide is moving, there is only one thing to do. We should move with it. Father, there are 16 new applications for the novitiate. 16 young men who wish to follow in the steps of Blessed Joseph. Who wish to follow and... Oh. Yes? No. No. No photographs within the walls. Oh, what is it? Nothing, just a little dizziness. You've been driving yourself too hard. Why don't we hear from His Excellency? Every day brings us new evidence that Blessed Joseph was truly a saint of God. Hardly evidence. Why do you fight this, Mark? Why must your whole life be one of unending questioning? You've been stalking this thing like a... well, like a criminal lawyer. Mark, what proof do you want? We have the word of the doctor himself. The word of a man who believes in nothing. All the more convincing, then. If he can't explain it away, it must be a miracle. most terrifying threat. Well, again, how are you, Peter? Like the town. Nervous, rushed, and bothered. I'll tell you why I'm here. You said the other day if we ran short of bed space at the hospital, you might help out. Man, I haven't forgotten. What space do you need? What's the matter? What goes on here? Shh. This is her Latin lesson. But she's supposed to be on her way to Europe. I said goodbye to her yesterday. Now everything will work out for the best. Come in. See for yourself. Hello, Peter. Hello. I thought you'd be on your way to Paris by now. So did I. But here I am, still following the Roman legions around Gaul. Come on, Terry. Come clean. What happened? All right, Peter. This trip to Europe did mean a lot to me, and to Mother, too. But there was something else here that meant a great deal more. You know what, don't you? I think I do. Yes. Terry didn't want to go away because she didn't want to miss graduation. Oh, graduation. Yes, didn't you know? She's graduating in June, top of her class. I'm very proud of her. So at the last minute, I said to her mother, now, uh, you do what you want to do. And I said to Terry, uh, you do what you want to do. And that settled everything fine. It sure did. Well, I'll consult with the tyrant in the kitchen. We should be able to make room for at least uh, five of your patients. I didn't want you to do this, Terry. I know you told Mother to take me away because you think I'm in care That's what every doctor has said. And no doctor and no miracle can help me. That's what you think, isn't it? Terry, be reasonable. I'm tired of being reasonable. Tired. There comes a time in everyone's life when it's all or nothing. That's the way it is with me now. Either I throw this chair away for keeps. Honey, please. But there's nothing more to live for. Nothing. Five blessings to you. I'll tell them. Five people, Peter. We'll take five, she said. But she won't shave the men's whiskers. Well, I'll do that. Thanks. I'll be running back now, Monsignor. Thanks again. anything more I can do? No. No, you fixed everything up fine. Just fine.
coming. I'm sorry to bother you at this hour, brother, but I must see Father Arnaud. Father Arnaud is busy right now. Very well, then. I'll wait. He's in chapel, hearing the confessions of the novices. Oh, I see. Uh, of course. Uh, you can wait in the community room if you like. Oh, that's all right. I know the way. Dr. Morrell. Doctor? What are you doing here? I had to see you. Well, I'm finished now anywhere. I'll see you in the community room. No, no, no. This is all right. I, I want to talk to you, and it has to be alone. You want to go to confession? No. No, I, I don't. I... Well, what is it? It's about a girl who lives in the town here. She thinks she's going to walk just because Father Sierra was able to walk, but it's, it's an incurable case. Well, I, I can hold her off for a while, but I, I can't hold her off forever. It's hard to explain since you don't know her. Uh, Doctor, I'm not sure I understand. Surely you're not responsible. I am responsible for every one of these pilgrims that come here looking for a married No, no, Doctor, control yourself. What is it you're trying to tell me? I'm trying to tell you you were right to be suspicious. Suspicious? Of what? There's nothing to this miracle. It's just a hoax. A fraud, a thing I dreamed up myself. Doctor, this can't be true. Oh, I didn't mean any harm. But At first, I only wanted to help Father Sierra. But after all, he, he did walk, and he, he did have some, some kind of a vision. A vision in which he spoke with Blessed Joseph. Father Sierra didn't talk with Blessed Joseph. He talked with me. Yes, it was I who told him to get up and walk. You told I me. felt at the start it was a nervous condition. I gave him an injection, and his imagination did the rest. I always wondered about the power of suggestion, and here was the chance to test it. Besides, it was fun. Fun? Yes, a crazy kind of fun. Watching you Jesuits scurry around like so many little black robed ants, getting all worked up about nothing, giving out statements, building up a brand new Jesuit saint, and all because of a miracle that wasn't a miracle. This is blasphemy. What's the use of debating it? It's done. And now you want to know how to undo it. Yes, because there was one thing I didn't count on. I, I never realized what it was going to do to other people. People like Terry. She wants this miracle so much, she'll die if she doesn't get it. What are you going to do? What can I do? You're going to tell the truth. To whom? To everyone concerned. Not to Terry. Yes, to the whole world, if necessary. Come, I'll go with you to Father Rector. Oh, hold on, Father. I'm not going to tell the truth to anyone, and neither are you. What you hear in confession is secret, isn't it? Why, yes. But you are not making a confession. You said yourself. All right, then. I'm making a confession now. I'm putting you under the seal of confession. Morel, you can't do anything like that. You mustn't. There are others involved. You haven't... You haven't a right. You're making me an accomplice to blasphemy. I can't help that. I'm binding you not to breathe a word of this to a living soul. But the truth is bound to come out sooner or later. There will be other doctors. They'll never agree with each other. They don't agree now. Well, they will want to see the records on Father Sierra. I burned them. Just after I talked to you at the hospital. I cannot even curse you as I should, Morel. God help you. 
God help me. Oh, God, most merciful. Grant this man the grace to see the truth and the courage to speak it. Don't let this mockery continue, I beg of you. Show us the way, O Lord, or we are lost. This is a historic day for St. Gregory's. The cause of Blessed Joseph is moving forward at last. The Archbishop has granted our petition. The commission will be named to take testimony at once. Congratulations, Father Rector. Congratulations. But tell me, just what was the Archbishop's own personal feeling in the matter? He doesn't say yes and he doesn't say no. But he gives us a free hand, and that's all I need. Well, now, are there any questions? Father Rector, do you... Do you have a good canon lawyer to plead our case in Rome? One of the best. We should be represented in this cause by Father Arnaud. But, Father Rector, you know I found it impossible to believe in this miracle from the very beginning. I must ask to be excused. Really, Father Arnaud, this is most irregular. Let me remind you that your personal belief is a matter that doesn't concern us now. But, Father Rector, how can I plead a case in which I do not believe? Oh, one moment, Father. As your superior, I can't, of course, command you to believe in something you, in good conscience, can't accept. But as your superior, I can and do request you to prepare the case, in which I believe. That will be all, Fathers. I'd ask you to remain, Father Anu. Oh, Father Keane. Yes, Rick. I ask Dr. Morell to stop by. When he comes, will you send him in here, please? I shall tell him. Oh, you'll be staying to supper, Monsignor. Today is Sunday, isn't it? Mm hmm And you'll be having cold mashed potatoes. No, thank you. Besides, we're having icebox cake at the rectory tonight, and your desserts are always terrible. <laughs> well, what do you say, Monsignor? I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I feel very much like Father Arno. Thank you, Brother Clifford. Then why bother to help us as much as you do? Vanity, Father Quarterman, vanity. You Jesuits have a way of turning up on the winning side, and I like to be with the winners. <laughs> now, Father Arno. Perhaps you'll be good enough to explain the meaning of this extraordinary attitude. I have no explanation. You must do as I bid you. You're under a special vow of obedience. Yes, I know. I know. A good Jesuit surrenders his will to that of his order in all things. And most of the time I have. But suddenly there is no point to it anymore. Call it insubordination, if you will. Disrespect for authority. The fact is I'm going stale. There's nothing anyone can do about it. Mark, this isn't like you. I might expect that from Fulton or Raleigh or any of the younger fathers, but not from you. You're made of different stuff. Am I? I wonder. All right, Father Rector. Let me ask you a question. Why were you so quick to believe in this miracle? Would you have been so quick if it wasn't the one thing you needed to prove Blessed Joseph is saint? You mean to imply that I've perpetrated a trick on this community? Oh, no, no, of course not. You were sincere, but you were wrong. And then everybody followed you, even the church. The church has taken no stand in the matter. Well, you said it yourself. It gives you a free hand. It allows you to go on promoting this fantastic enterprise. Sir, there's no promotion. Well, not directly, perhaps, but you reasoned this might be a miracle. Therefore, it prove itself. It has proved itself. It'll... Ah, Doctor, you covered just the right moment. Uh, doctor, let me ask you, on your word of honor, is it your opinion that this was truly a miracle? The recovery of Father Sierra will go down in medical history as a case for which we have no explanation. There, Mark, you see? I don't care what a doctor says. What evidence do you have is against Dr. Morell? I have no evidence. Ma, there are no two ways about this. Either you do as I say, or I shall have to Very ask well, you. then I resign. I can no longer be a Jesuit. No, 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 that, that solves nothing. What are you holding back? What is it? What is it? Goodbye, Father Victor. No, no, Mark, Mark, you can't go like this. 
Mark, you can't fail me now. It is you who are failing me. No. Oh. God, make me right. Arreto! Father! Heart attack. Gloriosum resurrectionem tuam. Rabbarum ascensionem tuam. Vagvachum spiritus sancti paractus. Nothing I can do in there. Brother gets me his prayers for the dying. What's getting you, Doctor, is that in there lies another victim of your glorious hopes. I won't argue with you. You can stop this thing before it gets any worse. By this time, no one would believe me. I've destroyed Father Sierra's records. I've no proof anymore. You can tell what happened. If I would tell now what you call the truth, what good would it do? It would only hurt all these people who have come up here with their hearts full of hope. Sooner or later, you're going to hurt them anyway, just as you hurt Father Rector. Do you know when Father Rector was hurt? At the very moment he began to fear it was all a lie. And that's when the rest of the people will be hurt, too. Morel, I beg of you, do what's right for once. Stop worrying about who will be helped and who will be hurt. Try to live one life at a time, your own. Anyone you want, any way you please. Right. Father Luke, Father Rector is asking for you. Come quickly, please. Edward, have I been anointed? Yes, Paul, everything has been done. Father Rector. Oh, Mark. I'm sorry, I tried to do too much too soon. There's no hurry when you're dealing with eternity. Even a miracle needs time to grow in. Edward. Edward. Yes, Paul. There isn't much to die. It's like moving from one room to another. This is the day appointed. And I'm content. You must bury yourself, Father Rector. Why should I spare myself now? Father Keane. Father Keane. Yes, Father Rector. You will be acting, Rector, till the new one is appointed. Use your authority with discretion. And try to serve God with a smile. Ah, oh, Monsignor, you too, a Jesuit to the end. I'm honored. Is there anything I can do for you? Yes. Don't neglect the fathers when I'm gone. Come and play them the way you did me. And sometime, remember to, to sing a small te deum for me. The te deum, Father Egbert. Yes, this is not a time for mourning. This is a time for rejoicing. I begin to see now that the miracle is to have faith. To have faith is the real miracle. The Lord God is my shepherd. Whom then shall I fear? Edward. 
Edward. Yes, Paul. Give me your blessing, Edward. Benedictio Dei Omnipotentis, Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. I don't believe you, Peter. I just don't believe you. I'm telling you the truth, Terry. There's nothing to this miracle. It never was. That's why the church has suddenly called off all these pilgrimages. But how do you know this? How can anyone know for sure? Terry, I was there. I planned it all. Father Sierra walked because he was always able to walk. It was just like a case of shell shock, that's all. So I gave him a new shock, a feeling that he was talking with Blessed Joseph and suddenly got up and walked. Is he really telling the truth, Monsignor? Would I permit him to lie about a thing like that? I don't know. Everything seems to be a lie. Maybe he thinks he can shock me. Make me stand up and walk like Father Sierra. Well, that I would lie to you, Terry. You've no idea what lies I would tell you if they would help. But, but what about all the other cases? Lots of other people were helped. You can't deny that. Honey, they helped themselves. These were all cases that had to do with the nervous system, like, like so many motors that turn over if they get the right spark. But your case is different, Terry. Yours is organic. Organic. It's, it's like a break in the wiring system of a car, a break that can't be mended. It can't? Terry, there are other things in the world, and, and enough of them to make life pretty good. Don't worry. You said yourself you thought it would be a great joke on the fathers. Well, I've got a sense of humor, too. I can take a joke. Terry. Sorry for what I've done. Well, I guess being sorry isn't enough. It doesn't change anything. I'll be moving out of town as soon as I can get my things together. I see you again before I go. And you think I would close my door in your face? Thanks, Monsignor. Take care of her. from your mother, Terry. Well, I suppose you must be in Rome by now. Hmm. Oh, by the way, thanks for saving the stamps for me. They're beautiful. You know, if I were an angel, I think half the fun would be flying from one new place to another and bringing home all the stamps. Wouldn't it be so bad to be deprived of a miracle? Well, I suppose it must be if you need one badly enough. Though that's hard for me to understand. I see miracles everywhere I look. They are there all the time. I'm an old man, and the only prayer I ever learned to say was the Our Father. And that left everything up to heaven. But once I learned to say it and mean it, I saw miracles everywhere I looked. We're miracles ourselves. And what more proof would one need of God? It's a miracle that God loves us. But he does. He does. Yes, Monsignor. And he loves you too, Terry. And he never forgets. Well, I must be going, I guess. <clears throat> good morning, good morning. Good morning, Monsignor. Cleaning up the miracle, eh? That's right. Yeah.
Caesar. Here. Come here, Caesar. Right. Back there, go. Get in there. Done. Get in there, Caesar. Take it there. Good morning. How goes everything with the Grand Army of Heaven this beautiful morning? May I advise you, Monsignor, that you are addressing the acting rector and the acting vice-rector of St. Gregory's? Oh. Well, then, uh, our congratulations in order, uh, Father Rector. No, not quite. Not yet, Monsignor. Sit down. Thank you. We have reason to believe, Monsignor, that we may have official word in the matter quite soon. You sent for me, Father King? Yes, I did. But I did not send for Father Arnoux. Isn't that your dog, Monsignor? Now, Caesar, I told him to stay in the car, but uh, he likes to hear the latest news. Caesar. I took the liberty of asking Father Arnoux to accompany me. No matter. What I have to say might just as well be said to you both. As acting rector, it is my duty to make various assignments for the house. And frankly, fathers, I am puzzled. I hardly know how to praise you. I gather that you, Father Arnoux, have not been at all happy with us here of late. And as for you, Father Quarterman, I can't seem to account for you at all. We carry you as a guest of the house, but you seem to be assigned to no province. May I suggest... Perhaps this cable from Rome will clarify matters. Ah, oh, it's Father General. <laughs> and it says... Uh... It says that Father Quarterman is an official visitor with power over us all, even over Father Provincial, if necessary. So they're changing the guard at Buckingham Palace. Father Quarterman, I am at your service. Thank you, Father Keene. I am happy to announce, fathers, that your new rector will be Father Arnoux. Father Quarterman? I don't know what to say. On that point, Father, our rules are quite explicit. You've only to say yes. Father Keene is relieved as of today. Father Sierra becomes vice-rector. And what, if I may ask, is your pleasure with respect to myself? Father Keene, your severity almost tempts me to suggest that for the next 30 days you make the long retreat. But instead, I'm recommending to Father Rector that he assign you to library work and also to loan you on Sundays to the Monsignor whenever he's in need of you. Oh, no. Father Keene is a valuable man. You can't spare him. Besides the honor to me... Why do I deserve such an honor? An order is an order. I accept what is given me. But I fail to understand how it could happen. Ah, my boy, discipline, discipline. It's a lovely and wonderful thing. Well, goodbye for now, Father, uh, Rector. And the best of everything to you. Thank you, Monsignor. You must always feel at home here. I will, if you stop serving those awful... I think I can promise some French cooking from now on. <laughs> Good. Come on, Caesar. Come. Caesar. Caesar. Such nice sense of discipline. Perhaps he too should have been the Jesuit. Caesar. Father, if I said a prayer in your chapel? Well, there must be some mistake. Our chapel is not always open to the public. This is a seminary. Oh. But how did you get in? Oh, that was easy. Joe brought me. Joe? Who is he? He drives a delivery truck, so this morning he delivered me. I came in the back way. You don't mind, do you? Well, I'm sorry, but I'll have to ask you to leave. You see, a rule is a rule. But I just wanted to say a prayer in the chapel. For everyone prayed the night Father Sierra walked. It's quite impossible. I told you our chapel is not always open to the public. What's the matter with everyone all of a sudden? It was a miracle. I don't care what anyone says. No. And you can't just lock it up and put it away as if nothing had happened, can you? My dear child. You're just like Dr. Morell. Dr. Morell? He too tried to tell me that everything was all over. Just a minute. Is your name Terry? Yes. How did you know? Well, we Jesuits get around now and then. Couldn't you break a rule just once? No, Terry, I can't say it's all right for you to go into chapel. But you can say a prayer here if you like. Oh, thank you, Father. That's something anyway. Now, Terry, if you'll wait here, I'll see about getting you back to town.
Oh, Doctor. Just the man I'm looking for. Well, good morning and congratulations, Father Rector. I've come to tell you I've done everything you wanted. I've told everybody everything and now I'm discharging myself. Peter, I want you to stay on as the house physician. Sorry, Father. Take it from me. We're from two different worlds. Better not try to mix them. What is it you're angry about now? Starting a new war with heaven? No, Father. I, I've learned my lesson. Terry. What is this? Oh, yes, that's what I wanted to tell you, Doctor. What's the matter? Just find it, that's all. Here. Hold her head down. She'll be all right in a moment. Pulse is coming back. But, Peter, how do you explain this? I can't, Father. It's beyond me. You mean she... She's going to walk? You saw it happen. Peter? Oh, Peter. The strangest thing happened just now. I know, Terry. I know. No, you don't. I was praying. And then suddenly, I don't know why, I found myself praying for you, Peter. For me? And as soon as I started praying for you, it happened. It happened. Monsignor was right. God doesn't forget us. Captain, may the Almighty be with you.